Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Dr. Dan Choi. Today we're gonna to be doing a reaction video on a crowd favorite, which is Grey's Anatomy. You guys seem to love this show. It's been requested multiple times in the comments. Today we're doing season five, episodes one and two, right after this. All right guys, before we get started, I'm gonna ask you one favor. Please, please, please smash that like button down below. It really supports the channel and also lets the whole world know who you think has the best doctor reaction videos out there. Just kidding. I know Dr. Mike has the best reaction videos, but still show me some love. And also if you don't wanna miss any future reaction videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. Let's get started. Driver, he flew through the windshield. Help him, please. Uh, Yang, yeah, come around and help me get aboard. Uh, bring out a gurney and a sea collar. So this is not a good scenario. It sounds like the patient was in a motor vehicle accident and flew through the windshield and sustained a pretty high energy trauma. Now, the goal of any doctor when assessing any trauma at the beginning is twofold. Number one is to secure the airway, make sure that the patient's able to breathe. Number two is preventing any type of spinal cord injury, which is what Dr. Bailey is doing here. She's asking for a backboard to strap the patient to, to mobilize the patient. So if there's any unstable spine injury, when they transfer the patient, from the car to the hospital bed, there's no movement that could further damage the spinal cord. She's asking for a C collar, which is a stiff collar that immobilizes the neck to prevent any type of unstable neck injury from getting worse and causing a spinal cord injury. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. oh, what? Press it, press! All right, so uncontrolled bleeding is any doctor or surgeon's worst nightmare. And that's because the patient can bleed out quickly and become very unstable and die. In any kind of scenario, it sounds pretty crude here, press it, press it, but this is actually the best and quickest way to get rid of uncontrolled bleeding, which is direct pressure to the site of bleeding. 45 arterial bleed, have an isolated okay, I got this, okay, let's get him in the trauma. Okay, wait, I'm holding pressure I to got open this. the bleed, I just need to... <laughs> Here, Dr. Bailey is pretty disappointed because her case just got scooped by Richard. This is what every surgeon lives for. She thought that she was gonna take this patient to the operating room, save his or her life, but here, unfortunately, someone else took over the case. Usually, in real life, this doesn't happen because every hospital has a call schedule, and there's one doctor that's responsible for every patient that comes in, and they're responsible from the initial evaluation all the way to taking care of the patient in the operating room, but this could be a scenario where she's the resident and Richard here is her boss. I'm not sure if she's still a resident here. Unfortunately, if that's the case, she does have to give up the case to him. The disappointment is real. You've been in a car accident. You're at the hospital, but we're gonna take really good care of you. Oh, is she okay? Might be a concussion. I'm gonna go order a CT to make sure it's nothing more than that. All right, so is here is ordering a CT of the head, which is totally appropriate when there's any history of head trauma. And especially if a patient is demonstrating any kind of neurologic symptoms like headache or confusion, anything that's concerning for damage to the brain. And so Izzy is getting this CT scan and what he'll be looking for is what we call a bleed in the brain that could be very dangerous and that would need emergent intervention right away. What kind of doctor are you? You're young. I'm an intern. Interns don't touch the face. The plastic surgeon touches the face. All right, so this definitely happens in training as a resident or a fellow. You may have a patient that thinks that you're too young or inexperienced to take care of you, and that's the patient's right. But this is a misconception that the plastic surgeon may be better than the ER resident at suturing the face. The plastic surgeon is actually doing surgeries all day long and may come into the ER maybe once or twice a week to suture up a facial laceration, whereas the ER resident may be doing it three to four times a day. So it's really a misconception that the plastic surgeon is better. Uh, Dr. Sloan, hi. Sarah Beth Breyer's got a facial lack, but she will only let you touch her. You paid me for a cut? What kind of moron are you, O'Malley? Are you a special moron from the Isle of Complete and Utter Moron? So in surgical training, there's definitely a fine line between tough love and hazing. And unfortunately here, getting called moron a couple times, that definitely falls in the territory of hazing is totally unnecessary. Oh, 
MDC, packing 160 BP 80 pal. Decreased by lateral and breast sounds. What did you do? I didn't do what he did. G.I. Joe traked him at the field before I got there. With a pen? You traked this guy with an ink pen? All right, so first let's talk about what a tracheostomy is. A tracheostomy is a procedure where an incision is made in the neck to access the trachea or the windpipe, and a tube is placed into the trachea to access that airway. It sounds a little crazy that this guy used a pen to do it in the field. He must not have had any other tools to perform this tracheostomy, so he did it using a pen. And I had to Google, has this actually happened? And it actually has. Now, I know that you guys give me a lot of heat in my previous Grey's Anatomy reaction videos because I said that this show is pretty realistic, and I get it. There's a lot of things that are kind of crazy with this show, including a pen tracheostomy. But if you actually Google this, this has actually been done. This one lady actually was eating at a steak restaurant, started choking on her steak, and lucky for her, she was actually at our steak restaurant where there were a bunch of doctors because there was a medical conference going on, and someone actually performed a pen tracheostomy on her and saved her life. So as much as you guys want to make fun of Grey's Anatomy not being realistic, this story has actually happened. Free fluid in the abdomen. Depressed skull fracture. He's also got decreased breath sounds bilaterally. This guy's getting an express ticket to the OR. Mm -hmm. Let the chief know. Can I scrub in? Fine. Surgeons are interested in scrubbing into the case. That's what Christina is thinking about. This patient sounds pretty unstable. He has, number one, free fluid in the abdomen, which could be a sign of trauma to various abdominal organs like the liver, pancreas. There could be an artery that is supplying the liver that could have been injured. Number two, Dr. Shepard actually notices that he has a depressed skull fractures, which should be a sign of major trauma to the brain. Number three, Dr. Hahn notices that the patient has decreased breast sound. So what this is a sign of is a traumatic pneumothorax, typically. How that occurs is there's air in the pleural space that actually pushes down the lung and causes it to partially or completely collapse, and the patient can't breathe when there is a pneumothorax. And what's sort of inaccurate about this is that typically you wouldn't take a patient to the operating room for a pneumothorax. You could actually fix that right there and then in the ER with a needle or and subsequently using a chest tube to decompress that air is very easy to do in the emergency room instead of taking him to the ER, which would actually further delay what he needs to treat that pneumothorax. So, you know, Gray's Anatomy got it wrong here just a little bit. You traked a man in the field using a ballpoint pen. That's all I had on me. What? It's not like I didn't clean it off with fresh snow. That's awesome. <laughs> That's true. He did the best he could. It's not exactly sterile to use a pen, but at least he cleaned it off with snow. I love Alex's reaction here. That's awesome. Spine's crushed from C6 to T1, impinging on the cord. Yeah, we need to go in and try and relieve the pressure on the spinal cord with this kind of injury. People don't walk again. So here, this is a situation that I see commonly as a spinal surgeon, which is getting called to the ER for a spinal cord injury. And Dr. Shepard here talks about how C6 to T1 is crushed. And that's where the spinal cord runs. It's the junction between the neck and the back and the bones are pushing down on the spinal cord causing injury. And this needs emergent surgery and the type of surgery that you need is to decompress the bones around the spinal cord to take the pressure off the spinal cord. And this needs to be done as soon as possible. Betty Kenner, closed head injury from the limo wreck. Uh, subdural hematoma. Which is why she has memory loss. Yeah, might ease up once we relieve the pressure. Book an OR. So Iz got the CAT scan of the head and it did show a brain bleed. And it showed a subdural hematoma, which is a collection of blood in between the brain and the outermost layer that covers the brain, which is called the dura. So a subdural hematoma is below the dura and pushing on the brain and causing a serious injury. And so this requires an emergent surgery called a craniotomy that's done by a neurosurgeon. It's literally holes drilled into the skull and to access the bleeding site to evacuate that hematoma. You can actually YouTube craniotomy and see a bunch of them in real life being performed. Well, I see a tear on the renal artery. Gang, are you familiar with the single layer continuous closure? Yes, sir, of course. All right, sir. BP's still dropping. Okay, max out on Lebafed and keep pushing the blood. Get in there and stitch, Yang. 
All right, not a good scenario. Like I said, uncontrolled bleeding is a surgeon's worst nightmare. Here, I gotta tell you one thing, the surgeon's gotta have some eye protection. You know, you have bleeding, you have blood squirting all over the place, not having eye protection is not a good idea. So here, Richard mentions to Christina that he wants her to do a single continuous stitch. And when you're doing closures, there's a difference between a continuous stitch and an interrupted stitch. And continuous is just basically taking a stitch and running it like a baseball stitch versus interrupted is stopping after each throw and tying it down. A continuous stitch is faster and that's why Richard is asking her to perform this in an emergent setting. Gang, how you doing? It's, um, I can't get it, it's, it's not holding. It's Hearing, I, oh, he's damn it, Yang, move. I thought you said you'd done the stitch. I have, a hundred times. On hearts. On hearts. All right, so it doesn't look like the closure is going well. And here, Richard, her attending, pushes her out of the way, which is totally appropriate because learning is important and teaching is important, but when the patient's safety comes at risk, patient safety is comes first above all else. So it's totally appropriate for Richard to step in there and make sure that the patient is safe. Your forceps were macerating the tissue. You were handling the bowel incorrectly, which you would know if you weren't allowed to clock so many hours in cardiothoracics at the expense of your general surgery. Pressure's dropping. So Dr. Han here is actually providing some good feedback to Christina about a technical error she's making, which is she's being too rough with her forceps to close that artery. In surgical training, attendings are always giving feedback like this to their residents. I got feedback like this when I was a resident and it didn't feel good. It really was hard to take criticism in the OR and know that you were making an error, but this was the best kind of feedback because it was helping me become a better surgeon and it was helping me become a safer surgeon and I would be better for my patients because of that. So I appreciated when I got any kind of feedback like this, you grow thick skin, this is what's necessary in surgery training. It looks like B-fib. 20 jewels. Clear. I need another unit of pack cells as many as it takes. That is not V-fib. V-fib is actually when the heart is quivering and it's not contracting like normal, it's normal heartbeat. And the heart monitor doesn't look like this. It actually looks like this. And what the heart monitor was showing earlier was actually a systole which is where there's no electrical signal within the heart. It's not contracting, it's not doing anything, and basically the patient is dead, and that's what the heart monitor was showing in the OR. So, so just so we're clear, asystole looks like this, and V-fib looks like this. Got it right here. Somebody get me some FFP. Right away. Suction, please. Suction. All right, so these are things you do not wanna hear from the surgeon in an operating room, which is number one. We need more packed red cells, which is basically he's asking for red blood cells to hang to give the patient blood transfusions because the patient is bleeding so much and you can tell he needs the suction. He can't see where he needs to operate because there's so much bleeding. And he's also asking for FFP, which is fresh frozen plasma, which is when you take blood and you spin it down and you remove the packed blood cells, you actually have the other liquid there and that actually has clotting factors. If you give patient clotting factors, then technically they should be able to not bleed as much. Great, what would you advise as a course of treatment? I think we should leave it in until we get the chest x-ray and the CT back. I'm fine. But what about infection? This thing is definitely melting dirty roof water into our body. Which is why we should pull it out. Leave it right where it is. You get stabbed in the chest and you're lucky enough to still be breathing, you leave the knife in. All right, so Christina has been impaled by a icicle that fell from the roof. Pretty ridiculous injury. I had to Google whether this actually happened. It does actually happen. People die every year, very small amount, but they die from icicles falling off the roof. Thankfully, it's pretty rare. It kind of looks like it's hitting nothing. Oh, it looks like it's hitting nothing because it's hitting nothing. <laughs> So, so like, what does that, what does that mean? What do you mean, what does that mean? Don't you know how to read an x-ray? So I gotta say that in this setting where an icicle has impaled Christina, I wouldn't rely just on a chest x-ray. I would also order a CT scan or advanced imaging to see what structures the icicle has actually injured so I could plan my ultimate treatment better. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's my icicle. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, you took out my icicle. I didn't give you permission to do that. So? 
<laughs> All right, so I definitely wouldn't recommend this, taking out this icicle in the emergency room. This usually should be done in a more controlled environment, like the operating room. The patient would be sedated or under anesthesia. To do it in a sterile environment, like an operating room, also you need to get patient consent. You need to let the patient know what you're doing. You don't want to surprise them and just pull out the icicle like that. That definitely would not happen in the hospital. All my surgical skills. No, we'll never know. What's going on? <sighs> Philip can wiggle his toes. Here, a little bit of a happy ending. I know this whole episode was pretty gory and doom and gloom and all, nothing is going right. So at least we have a happy ending here. It looks like Dr. Shepard's surgery on the spine was effective to some degree and the patient is moving their toes. So that spinal cord injury, the crush injury that happened at C7 to T1, if the patient is moving their toes, it means that the connection from the brain through the spinal cord to the feet is actually working. So there is a good chance, hopefully, that this patient's going to walk. <laughs> oh, say it. Don't make me say it. Please. Please say it, say it for me, even though it's technically not true yet. We made a man walk. <laughs> we made a man walk. We made a man walk. All right, so this is a nice happy ending to this episode. I gotta tell you that even being a doctor, there's always the tough moments and the challenges, but this is what keeps bringing us all back, which is being able to use your hands or your mind to intervene and to help patients and to save their lives or to help them walk again. And this is really what gets me up in the morning and what I love about being a doctor. So Grey's Anatomy is totally accurate in terms of this. All right guys, so thanks so much for watching today. And please, 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 if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button down below. If you don't wanna miss any other future reaction videos, make sure you hit the subscribe and bell notification. As well, please leave down below any episodes or shows in particular that you want me to react to in the future. I take those comments seriously. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.